record label owner, radio presenter, audio engineer, and a DJ remixing songs for three amazing Grammy Award winning artists, has over 12 million streams in over 175 countries and counting. He was listed 24 on the U.S. Billboard charts and spent 1,845 days on Beatport's World Top 100 charts. And somehow an article surfaced trying to pin he and I against each other as the two directors of entertainment in Dubai saying Versace versus Caesar's Palace. But he's my very good friend. Please welcome Mr. Anish Gare, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone. All right. How are you? I'm good, bro. You just got back? I just got back. All thanks right. for having me. And honestly, thanks for this. This is a very cool initiative and very cool people in the room. Yeah. Very much needed. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, what has been some of the challenges you face with your experiences in Dubai uh, with where you work? Caesar's Palace is no small anything. You know what I mean? That's, that's a very big name. And now with Red Sea Global and what you're developing over there, uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing and the uh, different structures that could be implemented to make it better? Right. So I first came into the city in 2004, actually. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the venue I played. I think it was a Crown Plaza. Um, 2004, a very different version of Dubai. I'll be very honest, did not like it. Uh, did not come back for a good 12, 13, 14 years. Uh, to give you an insight of, as to what Dubai was at that point, uh, I remember the promoters coming in. Gig was great, don't get me wrong. Very, really, very really cool venue, cool gig. And they took me to the, the hottest place in Dubai to go shopping, right? 2004. Anybody know what that is? Say again? I'm impressed. So this was the coolest place in Dubai called Dara City Center. <laughs> So that gives you an idea of to where, where Dubai was back then, okay? Um, and then I came back in 2019. I, I moved back to the UK and I was doing stuff with uh, Ministry of Sound and Pasha and all that kind of stuff there. And I came back in 2019 to do something with the W. And my jaw hit the floor. I was like, what is happening? It's, it's beyond brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, Touching what uh, I think Elijah said earlier, COVID, blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of had this crossroad in my life where I decided to move back to England post-COVID, work back with ministry. And I came to play the Formula One in Abu Dhabi uh, December 15th, 12th, 15th, something around, something around that time, 2021. And this is when half of Europe's in lockdown. The UK is a complete disaster. Let's not talk about Goa and India, because that was a super disaster. And there were 80,000 people here at the Formula One, right? And for someone who's been in the entertainment industry for 24, 22 years at that point, I was, again, floored that not only had this country done it, they had done it so right, you know? 80,000 people, I think people that tested positive were maybe under 1,000, you know? So I have no idea how they did that, and that was the the catalyst for me when I came in and I went, I don't care what it is, this is where I want to be, right? And this is where I want to contribute my future to. Uh, and then to, to answer your question about Caesar's Palace, um, yeah, wasn't a, wasn't a small baby. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of fell in love with that property a bit too much. <laughs> and um, when I came in, we didn't have much of an entertainment program. This was three years ago. There, was, there were no entertainment music directors in the city. It wasn't a thing. And I kept hearing this noise from the other side of the city about this guy called Dante and yada, 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 whatever, right? Okay, and then as Dante says, there was this article that came out that kind of pinned me against him. And then we just ended up, I think I invited you over for a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Can't get rid of him after that. And Honestly, I think that was the best thing that one of the best things that we did was and that's sorely lacking in my opinion in Dubai is there was no pardon my French, there was no bullshit between us. Our first meeting, we're talking about P and L's, licensing problems, how are we <laughs> dealing with artists? Yeah. Right? What is this permit that we need for different types of music musicians coming in? How do we get them in? Right? How do we start an open mic night for 30 people to have 
you know, random artists come in without paying, you know, 3,000 dirhams of DTCM for each person that may come up, etc. right? And that opened the door, I think, between you and I. Yeah. Anyway, cutting a long story short, Dante came over to perform as one of our key artists at, at uh, Caesar's Palace. Um, Dante performed at the closing of Caesar's Palace as well. Uh, when we shut doors, uh, put together an incredible group for us with the Vortex Band and, yeah, yeah. and a couple of other incredible artists. And I actually credit that entire journey or that era of my life to the president of Caesar's Palace, yeah. right? Uh, Tony, who we both know quite well, because very rarely do you come across leaders in hospitality in the space in the region now who have that vision to kind of trust somebody and go, okay, here you go, have a play with it, run with it, and tell us what we should do and why we should do it. And that's not happening. And not everything in this region has to be about p and right? That, that's my major grouse right now with Dubai, and I saw it in 2004, and I'm still seeing it 20 years on, that um, I think Mr. Mohammed spoke about the, the hip hop and rap scene, right, in Sharjah. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, because my first question when I came in to, to Dubai as a director was, where's the next Emirati rapper? Mm. And why can't I find him? And we knew there was a scene. We knew there's a scene on the ground. And I met with quite a few people. But the challenge I had was they couldn't put together a two hour set for me because they don't have the experience, right? Which is not their fault at all, right? We're all people from music here in our own respective backgrounds. We've all had that initiation where we, I, I've been a DJ for 24 years. So I started with two CDs, right? That I would just keep, that sh shows my age. <laughs> that I would keep mixing again and again. And that got me to a point where I could do a six hour to a seven hour set, right? These talents don't have that here because everything is a P&L. Everything is about a bar that has to play, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna upset some people, sorry. That's gonna have to play Shakira or, you know, or, or the latest Afro record or whatever it may be. And that's it. So how are they going to grow? And that was a challenge I have, and I still believe we have it, because you're not seeing venues on a Monday night when you're really quiet to say, open it. Get whomever, whether you're local or you're non-local or you're pushing a scene, right? I come from a place called Goa, where we have a very eclectic music scene, right? You'll find underground hip hop, dubstep, uh, psytrance, uh, drum and bass, uh, all kinds of dance music. And then you'll see a jazz scene, a blues scene, a huge country music scene. It's quite diverse. That's what we're not kind of seeing here. So I think that's my only grouse at the moment or my only thing I would like to change with the scene in Dubai. And unfortunately, that's going to have to sit with all the finance directors who Dante and I fight with quite often. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thank you for that. I wanted to ask you one more question. Uh, you placed and given many jobs to so many artists, musicians, and DJs in this region. What solutions did you find yourself providing while possibly dealing with the lack of resources for these curated events? Okay, so um, I've worked with a couple of people in this room actually, so that they'll know that. Um, standards are high, so I'm not gonna be very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very flexible with rules that can't be broken. Say, for example, your professionalism, your sound checks, that kind of stuff. So I tend to do most of my dirty work before the gig. Golden rule at the gig is when you are not stressed whatsoever. If you're stressed during a gig, you're not doing it right, in my opinion. Yeah. Right? Apart from major issues that will definitely creep up. So again, that's a bit of a mix with what you're getting in Dubai right now. You get a lot of talent who don't put in the hard work at, at starts right or before the gig um so it actually was a bit a bit basic and a bit childish in terms of the solutions we came up with i put everything into contracts because I should be saying this actually but i don't enforce them but it's good to have something in a contract for someone to go okay this is written on a piece of paper i need to do it simple thing that you that'd be shocked that you wouldn't come across like a dress code right so at caesar's palace i had three michelin star restaurants and I'm not, I shouldn't be talking about a dress code, okay? <laughs> but I'm gonna have people turn up, right, with um, an on iron t shirt, right, and a pair of shorts to sing in a Michelin star restaurant. And like I keep saying, look, I'm born in Goa on a beach, I live in shorts, but time and place. 
So you can say a lot of things without having to say them, and these were the issues we came across. Yeah. Um, so that would go into people's contracts, so they understood this is non-negotiable, right? You know that I'm really tough when I bring people in, mm -hmm. but once you're in, you're family, and yeah. then you, you know, you're part of the team, and you're always gonna work with us. That's so, one of the things that I was actually uh, bringing, bringing to the forefront is a lot of places in Dubai are not <coughs> implementing contracts with their artists. They're doing more of a handshake method. And then when it comes time to get paid, it's almost like, I don't really have to abide by mm -hmm. the rules and regulations of integrity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to good business standards, because there's no paperwork that says, I have to do X, Y, and Z for you. Mm -hmm. However, any artist I've ever brought here in queues, they get that contract before they get on a plane. 100%. My band, they're local, right? Uh, from Nigeria, but they have a contract. Yeah. However, I believe having certain things in place um, that safeguards, not just the artists, but also the companies, because it, it, it gives the Caesar Palace, it gives Versace, you know what I mean? The, the, the leverage to say, well, you signed here and you said you was going to show up by 8 o'clock and you got here at 9.30 and you still want your full amount. There needs to be something that holds even the artists and musicians accountable as well for the lack of and, and even from the company's perspective what they need to do to make sure that they take care of the performers. Yeah, 100%. I think everyone can agree on that here, but you know where the power actually lies here. It's not with the companies, it's with us. Yeah. And, and we're making that mistake, yeah. all of us, right? So this is what I tell all my artists. It doesn't matter what your deal is, right? I'm an artist, 24 years on, right? I'm doing, after 24 years, I still didn't think I'd be doing gigs pro, uh, doing gigs pro bono, but I'm doing something next month. I still have a contract. I'm not getting paid for it. I don't want to get paid for it. It's fine. But I still have a contract. This is what the agreement is. This is what you're going to deliver. This is what I'm going to deliver. So we all need to make sure that's a part of our SOP. Right? No, and push people on it. No problem. If you're not willing to give me a contract, that's a really good insight into the company you're potentially working with. And golden rule, if they're not willing to sign a contract with you, I wouldn't do it. Right? Luckily, it's Dubai. There's a million options for you, right? Streamline, get those guys off the off the grid, right? Maybe you can start a great collective with people you have here. I'm sure there's a, a lovely list of venues that everyone here would like to blacklist. Share it with people so we know who to watch out for. We know who the good guys are, who are going to protect us. But the artists need to lead that to say, I need my contract, right? Um, this is my fee. This is when I want to get paid, right? Now, whether that's going to happen or not, because you're going to deal with uh, financial departments, irrelevant. You're setting the tone. They're going to come back and say, oh, sorry, man, we can't pay you on the first. We'll pay you on the 10th. Great. No issues, right? You've got it on contract. You've got it on paper. It gives you a bit more power, right? Definitely puts in a thing that we do with our contracts, as well as we take a responsibility for the licensing and permits. Because I heard horror stories about a couple of really big venues here, which will remain nameless, that were not paying artists, uh, uh, what's over permits, mm. right? Because roughly a, a three month permit is 3,300 dirhams of DTCM if, if memory serves. You get a 10 piece band on that's 30 grand for three months. Your fine's 100 grand. Do your math. If I've got 50 artists playing over a three month period, it's cheaper for me to get fined, take a slap on the wrist and say, okay, no worries. Right, but then my artist gets blacklisted, and I'm having issues with my artist, right? And then Dante and I are always chatting, and I'm like, "Hey, should I book X, Y, Z?" And they're like, "Oh, bro, you know what? I heard that this and this has happened. It's nothing to do with you guys, but it's it's going to it's going to filter out." So we put that into our contract. Yeah. All licensing permits, <coughs> visa, etc., is on us. Yeah. Right. So I think it's better for the artists to lead that and to say, "This is what we need." And if anyone needs any help or guidance with that, I'll be happy to, to give you a small little uh, SOP. Please put your hand together for Mr. Anish Thanks for having me. Guys, please round of applause for Tonsa.